In 1984, the Wild Dogs decided that they didn't like the male audience coming to the shows and wanted someone who would be more girl-friendly. There is no more girl-friendly than I am. I am pro-woman, and all the, all the women loved me and told me we hated those guys. They were assholes. So I didn't have sex, but I won. So they got one guy, John Tejeda, and he didn't work out. One morning I get a call that says, hey, Matt, hey, buddy. It's When anybody calls you and says, hey, buddy, <laughs> you know it's going to be bullshit. They said, how about, would you, would you like to do a gig with us? I go, what happened? Well, John didn't show up when we're leaving to go to California, and we need a singer, because we got to do this gig. It was close to White, uh, White Rico or Eureka in Humboldt County. So I said, rent me a car, I'll go. So my wife and I rented a car, went down, my wife, Angie, who just passed away a couple weeks ago. Um, we went down to California, we did the gig. I found, I did the road manager bit. I found, I got them almost a pound of marijuana in Humboldt County. I said, look guys, happy times are here again. And split it up. They gave it to me. The promoter gave it to me. And uh, I was in the band for about four months and we're going to do a show on Dean's birthday, ironically, in 1985, I think. After playing with Ingve in Sacramento and a bunch of, bunch of shows in the Northwest, we didn't ever tour. So it's Dean's birthday. They got a show at the Starry Night in Portland. It was going to be sold out. And I got a call from all these publicists that week that said, hey, I heard you're in the band, but I just got a press release from the manager, Ken Mednick, who happened to be Journey's Light director, and said that they've got this other guy. And I said, well, they didn't tell me, but they didn't tell me the first time. And they they uh, told me they replaced me on the tour bus with a meeting with Ken Mednick, uh, a two-day gig with Night Ranger and Black and Blue. I went the first night. We had a great time. It was all fun and game. The, the band didn't show up that night. They showed up the second night. And there's one extra guy. He's skinny, got long blonde hair. and uh, I'm Hi, how are you doing? And uh, we get on the bus. I got him first. And uh, Jeff, the guitar player, gets on last with this guy. and goes, hi, Ken. This is our new singer. And I go, hey, that's a good joke. And he says, no, that's what's happening. I go, well, thanks for telling me. I had to sit through Night Ranger twice. Black and blue, I like, but Night Ranger? I can live my whole life without them. <laughs> Sister Christian Mary Brown. No, great guitar players in the band, but I just didn't like their music. But Black and Blue is a great band. So I left, and... Uh, the rest is history. I joined later on. And uh, so we're doing this gig at the Roseland or the Starry Night. And my friend Eric Frey, or better known in the Poison Idea punk rock circles as Airy Boner, or Boner, he was a drummer in the Imperialist, Imperialist Pigs, the Tom that, the, the Tom that band, the band that Tom Pig was in before Poison Idea. I produced them and also produced Poison Ideas, Pick a King. Anyway, so he says, dude, in this Swiss voice, because he's Swiss, he said, dude, what's up? And I go, well, I just got all these calls. He goes, call your manager. So I call the manager. He goes, what are you talking about? You're not, they're not doing a show on Friday. I go, yeah, we are. He goes, well, you're not in the band. I go, well, as far as I know, they didn't tell me. And so... I hang up, and Eric said, well, call the rest of the guys. So I call them. They all say, oh, no, that's not happening. No, no, that's not the deal. That's that. No, 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 no. They wanted me to do the gig so they wouldn't have to forfeit it. So the third round of calls to the manager and the guys, 
Same answer. Eric has this grand idea. Dude, show up like it's okay. Walk on stage. Say thank you, good night before you have to sing and leave. And that's exactly what I did, except I said, let's add a little bit more fun to the proceedings. And I said, I will get in as many people as I possibly can for free. And then after I leave, everybody was instructed to wait 20 minutes. And when it realizes that I'm not coming back, go ask for a refund, which would... <laughs> Larry Hurwitz did not like to give refunds, but we made over $140 in refunds. We all went back to the villa, the villa, the house where evil dwells. And where I was the apartment manager at the time. Part of the reason they wanted to get rid of me because I had to, I had to go do, I had to work. And I wasn't available all the time to sit around practice while these teenage girls were coming over and they were trying to get sex from them. I'm down to business. That's why I started Evil Genius, because practices were just a joke. But, so, that's what happened. I said, the whole time in the, in the dressing room, they are all, oh, no, man, everything's, yeah, great, let's have a great show. We could have had a great farewell show and build it as that. But no, they're chickens. And so I said, thank you, good night, all the fog and lights, and left. They thought I wanted to take a pee. But I had already done that backstage. There was this little hole in the floor, and it used to go straight down to the showers when it was a mission. That used to be... That building used to be the Portland mission for homeless people, for bums. And there's showers in the basement, and the place was a church at the time. So, <laughs> I left. We had a party. I joined Mayhem. Steve Hanford called me up the next day and said, that was so punk rock, dude. Will you join Mayhem? And I said, sure. I joined Mayhem. Paper the recording of the Mayhem Burned Alive album. We did that, and I did Dr. Mastermind a few months later. It was a great year for me. And, uh, well, on Dean's birthday, I would like to remember a great time <laughs> that I was not there, and Dean sang for me, and he's a great singer. And if you were there, you know what I'm talking about? It was fun. Chris Ackenhauser showed up. I think John Donnelly played, uh, sang one song. And then they all came to my apartment and we uh, partied. But uh, that's it. Happy birthday, Dean. Oh, memories like the colors of my... <laughs> this reminds me of Sean Dawson's stained underwear that Dean was... I have pictures I want to show you. And he goes, hey, D hey, Sean, here's your underwear. And he held it up where we recorded Dr. Mastermind. And me, Kurt and I were down there for a couple of weeks before that, putting on vocals and lead guitar. We recorded the basics in Portland, and Rick, Rick McMillan totally screwed me on that whole deal, milked me for every penny. I could have done the whole thing in California like in one day. But he stretched it out over four days. Oh, I didn't hit record. Like there's drum fills that he, Dean did that were awesome. <sighs> Never trust your guitar player's friend who owns a studio when you are not in that band. So he, he's holding up this underwear, and Jerry and Clyde were with their faces right behind, smiling. <laughs> and I go, that's where the term personalized underwear came from. <laughs> <laughs> that I've mentioned in quite a few videos. So I'll see you later. I'm back. I'm doing more rock and roll interviews. And uh, boy, the, the publicity departments in all these record companies just suck these days for metal, for rap. I can get rap. I can get the top rap stars to do a podcast interview. No problem. They do it around my schedule. But the heavy metal guys, no wonder they don't sell. But 
that's a different story. I've got a, a couple of acting auditions I'm doing, one for a movie called Eyes, to play a chatty bartender. <laughs> and uh, the other one, I can't disclose the name of it, but it's a big one. So I'm getting back into acting, because I'm pretty much done playing music. I'm pretty much done paying to play music is what I should say. Thank you. Visit usbill.com. The Wild Dogs and Dr. Mastermind albums are cheap. I want to move that stuff out of here because I got things coming in that needs the room. Thank you.